Hi everyone, this is Ida of Creative to Create. Welcome back to my channel. If you are not 18 years or older, this video content is not intended for you. I have a couple of uh, cards that I created that I wanted to share with you all. Um, I picked up a couple of um, tag dies from HSN and I really like these. And I know I already shared the, this tag die with you guys is from studio lights but i picked up another one let me grab it really really quick mm. i just completed my uh, card so i haven't put it back in the package yet so let me let me put this up here and so this comes with four different dies and this is the one that i used mostly for my um Hold on one second. This is the one that I used to create my card. And this measures uh, like four and one eighth across. And I think I said it was, I think I told my friend Jackie it was um, eight and a quarter inches tall. So it's pretty close to a slimline card. So it comes with the outer die that has the stitching. And what I did with this, I cut out a piece of paper that measures nine by nine. And I scored it down the middle at four and a half um, to create the base for my card. Uh, but when I lined up my, my die, I let it fall off the edge of the folded side where I had, uh, where I had uh, folded over my paper. Where the score line is when I folded it over, I let this fall off the edge so this side would not cut, but everything else would. And uh, that's how I made my card base. But after I did that, I went ahead and cut it again just on one one uh, sheet of paper or a piece of paper uh, because I wanted to layer it on top because I wanted to for you to be able to see the stitching all the way around. And when I let it fall off the edge, well, you weren't able to see that. This is the other die that I picked up. Look at how beautiful it is, guys. Uh, whether you did this in a cream uh, paper, colored paper, in a white, in any pearlized paper, it doesn't matter what kind of paper you use, this is so beautiful. It kind of reminds me of lace. Now, you can't cut just this piece by itself because it's not going to, uh, to um, cut out completely. It'll stay attached because this side of the die is not a cutting die. I'm sorry, this side. Is not it doesn't cut so you do have to use uh, the next one over and the layering piece the filigree one to create a card uh, that way it stays intact and this was my first one I did and I actually made a mistake but I because uh, I used a one piece by itself and then when I tried to salvage it I had cut it too short around the edge to be really able to center it uh, but I was able to salvage it. You know, I'll put something here and camouflage that and you won't be able to see it. But this is what you get when you cut out both pieces. So I really like uh, the way that looks. And let me share my card with you guys. You all know I started doing um, embossing on parchment paper. Uh, but it's been my experience that vellum, thick vellum, the thick vellum that I use and the parchment paper are so similar there's for me there's hardly any difference I think the only difference is is that the parchment gets a little bit wider when you use your embossing tools um, yes I can put a piece of parchment in between an embossing folder and run it through my machine and it will emboss but there's something to me about doing it by hand that is so relaxing it's therapeutic for me it's very soothing so I get a lot of satisfaction from doing that. So that's what I have been doing, uh, really hand bossing and putting my details in where I want them just by using the ball tools and a shading tool and that's, and some stylus. Anyway, um, I made the base in a white and you can see right there is the fold to the card and you can see a little bit of the pink tag on top because, um, that one I cut on a single piece of paper. That way I could layer it on top and you could see the stitching 
all the way around. So I love the way it looks. And the next die over, I did a white layer uh, because I wanted to, you know, just uh, separate, put a separation between the pink and the white. So uh, then I cut a uh, the last size, not the filigree, but the smallest, the silhouette dies. I cut that out of foam. I cut it out of foam. My phone's doing funky stuff with the light, you guys. I cut it out of foam, and then I cut it out of this paper, this very uh, pale pink with the white polka dots, and mounted them together. That way I would have dimension, so it's it's thick. It's not real thick, but a little bit. And I use a Dollar Tree uh, foam board when I do stuff like that, and this the dies go right through it. Uh, for the filigree piece, I cut it using an Anna Griffin I'm sorry, no, it's not Anna Griffin. It's a uh, Crafter's Companion uh, pack that I have. I love Crafter's Companion uh, uh, specialty papers. And I bought this probably a couple years ago, and I really have not used it because I forget that I have it. So I decided to go ahead and take it out. And uh, that's what I did the, fil the filigree piece with. And also this little tag came from... It came from this tag die, the the smallest one. I love these tags because they have the main tag, then they have a layering piece, and then they have the little uh, hole reinforcements that you can do in any color you want. For this particular card, I use the smallest in this package. And, and I, all I did was cut it out again in that foil with the scraps I had left over from the piece I used. And... Um, and then I cut out the layering piece out of the very thick vellum and I embossed hello on there. Now to adhere it to the tag, I used a little strip of, of the double sided tape like score tape that we use. And I only put it from, from the beginning of the word and I mean of the H and to the end of the O because you can see through that. But because this, the, the strip was only as white as the letters, it kind of looks like I shaded in that area with a darker blue. But really, it's just the score tape. So it does show through, but it, in, this, in this case, it worked. And then I, I did the reinforced uh, holes in the white, and I just added a very thin one eighth of an inch ribbon to the little tag. Um, these flowers right here are a tattered lace dye, and these are called thistle. And I have them in a variety of colors. Let me share these with you. So th these are very much like Carnation Craft. You print out your images and then you use some, some of the images have coordinating dies. And then you're able to print out, uh, you're able to cut out the artwork. So I have them in the blue and I have them in a pink and I have them like in a very pale lavender. So that's what I used back here. And then I added this little piece right here. And this is a carnation craft. I think it's called a peony. Tree, tree peony. And this is from carnation craft. And my friend Jackie gifted these to me in, the, in a variety of colors. And I just used a, just a small piece of the blue to, to create that. And, and to just really finish it off. Again, I created another one of those vellum butterflies uh, that I hand embossed. And I actually, th this was a printed image. I printed it out from the internet. I traced the butterflies on my vellum. And I do have a tutorial on how I created these. And uh, and this is the bigger si one of the bigger sizes and then the small size in the exact same butterfly. I did add a piece of foam in between the bodies to adhere them together. And I kind of feel like I like the way this looks with the wings open, but I would have to tack it down somehow. But then when I release it and they come up like that, I like that too. So I don't know. Go figure. It just depends on your preference. All in all, I love the way this came out. I didn't put a sentiment in it yet. So there's the inside. And of course, I'll just hold on to it until... Uh, I'm going to send off happy mail or if I need to make a birthday card or anything like that. That's what I'm going to use this one for. So that's one of the cards that I created. Let me move that to the side. 
And I'm really enjoying working with vellum, you guys. So, look at this beauty. Let me let me move this one. It's pretty, but look at this beauty. How beautiful is that? This is a very big card. Um, it's not very wide. I think it's about a five and a half inch wide, but I used a uh, I used a full sheet of an eight and a half by eleven. And I just scored it down the middle on the long side to create my card base again in white. So it's it measures eight and a half by five and a half. And that was my base. Again, I don't have a sentiment in here because not sure what I'm going to use it for. But for this one, I did use my groovy plate, which I'll share with you what that looks like. Oh, let me see. Should have had it handy. I used this groovy plate and I only used the teapot and I used the sentiment that is up here. I used the sentiment. I hope you can read it. I know there's a lot of glare. And I used this teapot to create uh, this one. And um, and I'll show you the sentiment close up. Right there is the sentiment. And then the teapot, The what I did with the teapot, um, whenever you're doing uh, embossing on parchment, I wanted my teapot to look like it was sitting on a doily. So I printed an image of a doily that I like, like a half doily. And, um, and I downsized it to fit because when I first printed it out, it was really big. So I brought it into another software in my computer and I made it smaller. But uh, the way this works is if I want my teapot to look like it's sitting on top of the doily, then I would do the put the teapot, I would uh, emboss the teapot first. And then I would do the doily and I would skip over the areas where the teapot is over the doily. I wouldn't trace that. I would just trace everything that's around it. It's almost like a mask. Uh, and you can see through here the doily pieces uh, so you're able to line up and just omit whatever, leave out whatever you don't want to want uh, embossed. But I love the way it looks. I did do some open work on this. I didn't do too much, just a little bit. And then I made some little flowers again out of the parchment, added the pearl centers. This was a bow I had created just messing around before I got any of my products in. Here's another one of those little vellum butterflies in the pink. And uh, to get this metallic gold leafing color, I did use a gold leafing pin. Uh, the only thing is that I only had the, the wide one. I didn't have the narrow one. And it, I had a big drip right here. Uh, but I was able to save it because I just used the nib to kind of spread it wherever and trying to keep it contained. Um, I didn't do any open work on the teapot, but I did color the back lattice work in pink in a darker shade of what I was using then I got a a um, another frame groovy plate and I created this frame that looks like a picture frame around it and um, it's kind of hard to explain it's something that I would have to show you again same concept I left out like my line here when I got to the handle I stopped then I came over the, the handle, past the handle, and then I started the line again. When I got to the other portion of the handle, I stopped and crossed over and began again. So I was staying away from embossing anything over the teapot because I wanted to, for the teapot to look like it was sitting to front and center. And, um, and to mount it, normally you have to either use some kind of photo corner punch or you have to use brads. What I did was I left about a three-eighths of an inch perimeter all the way around the last score line that was on the the last embossing that was on this frame. And I and I folded it over, guys, and I just snipped the corners to be able to fold them under. And I used double-sided tape to mount it onto a piece of cardstock. Before I did that, though, I did do some ink blending. You can see the pink right here and the green up here. I did some ink blending on the cardstock before I mounted the vellum to it. 
So then I was able to just glue it down because there is no glue on top. The glue is underneath because the edges of my frame are wrapped under that cardstock. And then I used this Anna Griffin uh, lace border die and I just added some pearls. And I wanted to kind of swap the colors out. You have the moss green here and then the pink here. Well, I did the reverse on the back piece. So I added pink to the top and the green to the bottom. And you can see right there a little bit. You can see where the green and the pink line up. So it was just two pieces of paper. I wish my card would have been a little bit wider or not really. I should have done my panel right here a little bit more narrow. All in all, I love the way it came out. And then, of course, like I said, I topped it off with a butterfly. In this instance, I did the smaller butterfly. And then I did just the inner wings to the uh, smaller butterfly. Added some foam tape and mounted it. And I just love the shape that it holds on to. Again, this one doesn't have a, um, a sentiment because I don't know what I'm going to use it for. But I just wanted to share these projects with you guys. I hope everyone is having a great Saturday. And God bless. Bye.